yay, now I'm teaching, sort of, in one minute. Yep, I feel that. <laughs> Class starts in 60 seconds. Yes, please do not so. I'm sorry. Who is that? That's Ripper. Hey, Ripper. Hey, bud. Hi. I'm, I'm sewing. He said that he stop now. Yeah, he has to stop now. <laughs> Will I know when people join? Yes, you'll hear the beep because I'm letting them in the room. But the one on Facebook, people who are watching from Facebook, I'll just tell you how many people are watching. OK, and how do I answer questions if people do have questions? You'll see them on the side chat, or I can be, I'll unmute myself and ask you, be like, hey, someone from the crowd asked this. I will, let me see if I can see it so that I can see the comments as well. And. Um, OK, I'm going live on Facebook now. Okay. I'll just click on the, turn off my volume on my computer and click on the link there. And then I should be able to see all the comments. Because it should be sharing to the Coro de Capo. Mm -hmm. Should be there right now. Yes, it is. I think I know that was 17 hours ago. Just now. Oh, and I see my face. <laughs> Will I get um, comments on Zoom or? Depends on how many people join the Zoom. Okay. I think majority will be on the Facebook, but we'll see. I'm also putting the Zoom link in the room. See, does someone enter the room? No. All right. should, I, should I start? Yes. Okay. All right. So um, we're going to learn how to make a paperback book today. And if you don't have all the materials, most of them are optional or can be done later. And it's very simple. Most important ones that you need right now are 24 sheets of paper. I have um, this pretty uh, sort of old looking double sided printed paper that is already pre cut. Um, and I'll talk about dimensions in a minute. You'll need scissors. Um, I use a, oh no, I use a fancy needle threader that is mad at me. Anyway, you'll need a needle threader, all right? And you're gonna need a large needle. So I use a leather working needle, it's quite thick. You can also use the curved one that will help with punching through your paper. Um, I, a ruler to measure your mm, holes. And did I say thread? You need thread. You can use regular thread or I use this thick yarn. Um, just because it makes me feel like my books are more secure. And this is one thing that I forgot to mention in the supplies, um, a box cutter of some sort to trim your paper at the end. But if you don't, if you don't have one, you can trim your book at any time. Okay, so I'm going to put all these to the side. And the first thing... Before we start, uh, what cut, where do you get your materials from? Joann's. Uh, they have a so wherever you get scrapbooking materials, um, you'll find everything you need in a scrapbook section, but you're going to use it for a totally different purpose. Walmart has stuff, Joann's has stuff, Michael's has stuff, every craft store has a cra uh, scrapbooking section. And I really like to get lots of different kinds of pretty paper. Um, and lots of different kinds of cardstock for my covers. So today we're going to make a book that is five and a half inches tall by four inches wide. So if you do have your regular paper, I'm going to use this green stand-in for trimming your pages. So you could use a paper cutter, um, a it, that slices it. I have one in my classroom, but I didn't bring it home with me today. 
So what you're going to want to do is you'll want to fold your paper and then trim it to the size you want your book to be. So ours is four inches. by five and a half inches. And it's okay if it's not exact because at the end you trim all your pages together at the same time. So if it doesn't line up right, that's gonna happen no matter how perfect your measurements are or how perfect your cuts are. When you start sewing your book together, they will come unaligned by like millimeters and that will make your book look um, uneven without trimming. So you always have to trim. So I folded my paper, then I measured four inches and five and a half inches. And so now I should have a piece of paper that looks like this. And you're gonna need to do that 24 times. So I already did that. If you're doing this with me, I apologize for my time travel, but um, in order to fit this into an hour, that was what I had to do. Um, so now you're going to be making signatures with your um, pieces of paper. A signature is a section in the book of pages that are folded together and are sewn as one. Um, if you have a book with you, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't. If you have a book with you, you can look at the spine. You know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go get a book. Hang on. If you haven't read, it's not easy being green. Um, it's a really inspirational book and you should pick it up. So if you look at the spine of a regular store-bought book, oh, I wish I could show you closer. Um, you can see how there are separations in the pages and those are signatures. And if you find the middle of a sig any of the signatures in your book, you should be able to find the red. And I'd love to show you that right now, but we only have an hour. So we're gonna make signatures. The way you make a signature is you take your paper and you just put it inside of each other like this. You can, with regular thickness paper, you can do up to six, but for this, example we're only doing four um you can go as low as three and as high as eight but the best is six after you have all your signatures made you should end up with you should end up with one two three four five six signatures um with your 24 pieces of paper um with your signatures after you have all of them made, you're going to have to start poking holes in the spine for your sewing later. This step is technically optional. You can um, measure as you sew, but I like to have a clear marker for where I'm going in my book without having to measure constantly. It does require some dexterity. So you want to, from the top edge of your book, measure half an inch down. If you put it too close to the edge of your signature, it will tear out the top of your signature. Half an inch is far enough to keep your pages from bending without um, having the thread tear right out. So you'll take your measuring device, a ruler of some kind, and oh, this is optional. Um, I like to take a piece of foam. So I just cut a strip of, I think this is two pound foam, and I put it in the middle of my cutting board 
And then I put the spine of my signature on top of the phone. The reason I do this is because if I can make my needle go all the way through the paper and the foam, I will get to the full thickness of my needle. So it does taper off. I'm sorry, it's blurry. It does taper off at the edge of your needle. So if you do it just straight on the cutting board, you'll have smaller holes on the inside than on the outside. And just the more you go through, the easier it's going to be later on. When you poke holes in your paper, if they become misaligned in some way, that's okay because we're gonna trim the book at the end. However, you wanna get it as even as you can. So if you need to just a couple of times, just tap your signature to get them lined up, it's worth it. All right, so from half an inch down, I take my needle and a finger protector. I don't know the names of things. Um, and you're going to use it to push the needle through your paper. If you're doing eight sheets of paper, um, you're really gonna want one of these. Um, mine has holes in the tip. You can get this at Joann's and that holds onto my needle when I'm pushing it down in. So I put one hole in my paper, half an inch down from the top. And I'll show you that right there. I have a hole. Do I have um, questions or comments or comments? Hi, Jessica. <laughs> okay, so I did half an inch down for my first hole in my signature, and then you're gonna do one inch um, segments. So I did it at half an inch. Now I'm gonna put another one at one and a half inches. The finger protector is called a thimble. Oh, thank you. My grandmother has a thimble collection and she tells me about it all the time. And whenever I go to visit, I'll always say, Grandma, did you get any new finger thingies? And she'll say, you mean thimbles? And I'll go, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and so two, uh, so now my next hole is gonna be at two and a half inches and then three and a half inches and then four and a half inches. And then we sh will not put one at five and a half inches because that's how tall our paper is. So after you get your signature prepped for threading, you should have something that looks like this. If I can get the light behind it just right, you can really see it. Oh yeah, that's the best I can do. <laughs> and after you've prepped all your signatures, like I have, you'll have six signatures ready for sewing. The next step is to thread your needle. So this is where your needle threader comes in play. Actually, I'm gonna get rid of this and start over. I was totally prepped, but if you're using a really thick needle like this and really thick thread like I'm using, this wool thread, you're definitely going to need a needle threader. You can use regular cotton thin thread, um, but I just don't like it. Um, and actually it'll show up less in your final product, but I really like the way the thread looks as I'm sewing my book. I just get a, uh, I get a kick out of spineless books. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're using regular thread you should double up as if you were about to hand sew like this and then tie off your end down here you do not have to double up if you're using thick wool thread like i am but i do for the added security of knowing my thread is not going to rip in the middle of making my book which has happened and it feels real bad. So to start sewing, which is the hardest part, is just starting. You're gonna start at the top hole, except you're not gonna thread the top one. You're gonna go to the second one down. 
So the one that's at one and a half inches. And my signature got off, there we go. So I'm at one and a half inches down to start. Oh, your thread. The first one. Why do you skip the first one? I will show you in a minute. Um, it has to do with how you finish it off. So what you are going to do is you're going to leave enough thread to reach your first hole. Oh, I did too far. There we go. And then you're going to inside, outside, sew from the bottom up. So now I'm on the inside with my thread. And if it comes off a little bit, it's okay. You can tighten it up later. And so now I'm on the outside of my signature and I'm going to sew towards the inside. Once you get to your last hole in your signature, you don't go around the edge like this. Your edges will be free floating and at the end, you shouldn't be able to see any of your threads. Now, you're gonna go backwards so that all of your holes have been sewn twice or have been sewn through twice. And then you'll finally put one through your top hole. And this is why we did not sew all the way to the edge. So you should have this extra piece left at the end. If you didn't double your thread, just put a knot in it and have your thread come through the knot. And now your signature is started, which is the hardest part of this whole thing. The rest of it is easy. The easiest way to do this is in your lab. I'm gonna do it on my board because I think that's the easiest way for you to see it. And there are professional bookmaking tools that you can use that'll hold your signatures in place while you sew. I don't have those. And I just really like the feeling of hand sewing book. So you'll take a second signature and you need to make sure it's lined up correctly. I was about to misalign mine so that your half inch distance matches with the first signature's half inch distance. You're gonna go through the outside hole on the top this time. You'll start at the top from now on. And the best way to hold your book while you're working is to have the inside of your signature open and the inside of your previous signature open and to hold them together. I know that sounds a little complicated, but um, that's the best way to do it. And so then you'll be able to quickly flip between the inside where you're sewing, um, the outside where you'll be looping threads. I'll show you in a minute. And um, is there another side you need? Nope, that's it, that's two sides you need. All right, so on the inside of your second signature, you'll go through that. Maybe I can. Um, if, you're, if you come unaligned like I have on this signature, you can just use your bobbin to make it work because nobody's gonna see this part of your book in the end anyway. The more holes you have, the less structurally sound it'll be. All right, um, so I've come through my second signature and it's not yet attached to my first signature. So what I do, I'm gonna show you very close, is I have two different threads looped on my first signature. So these are two different um, stitches. So if I 
put my needle underneath one and then back around through the other, my signature stays attached at that link. And this is, there's a lot of different ways that you can stitch signatures together, but this is called a Copic stitch. Um, see, I knew that, I know that one. Um, so you're gonna put it back through that hole that you just came out of, so that on the inside, you're coming back out of the same stitch you just made. And then you'll go back in through the next one. I learned how to book bind from a YouTuber called Sea Lemon, and she has lots of instructional videos on all kinds of book stitches. Um, this one is my favorite, so this is the one that I always use, but uh, especially for leather bound books where you see the threading on the outside, there are some very cool stitches that you can use that are more decorative. Um, after you've come out on your next one, you'll do the same thing underneath one of your first signature stitches and then back under a second signature stitch and then back out through the same hole to the inside of your second signature. Um, the rest of it works exactly the same way. So you're just going to go back through your next hole. Under one of your first signature stitches and back out through a separate signature stitch. The first few are pretty easy. As you add more and more signatures, it gets thicker and tighter and more cumbersome. So I just did my last one and I just went through that one and then I'll close the whole book just to make sure that it's nice and tight. It'll look like this with just two put together. The first two are easy. As you add more and more, it gets tighter and you have to really hold the book tightly and in a specific way. So like I said before, I'm going to hold open my new signature from the middle and my last signature from the middle. like this. Now I'm at the bottom of my new signature and it will work the same way as last. I will go through my first, see this is why I do it in my lap. It's a lot easier in the lap. You go through your first hole at the bottom of your signature and out the second. It's already attached at that first um, hole from your last stitch. So you don't need to come back through that one more than once. On your third one, this is gonna be hard to show you. Okay, so on your third one, what you will do is instead of going through your first two stitches, you're going to go, very difficult to show. You are going to go under and out your second signature stitch. So you have to go at an angle into the space between your, between your signatures and then back out to the um, spine of your book. Um, you can attach to your first signature, um, but you'll end up with really long thread and it's just wasteful. I'll show you guys how to do that again. You go back out through the same one that you just went into. 
So the inside of each one of your signatures, you'll have a seam. Some people ask me, you know, because I, I did do a, I do a lot of sewing. They asked me how I got into bookbinding. When I started watching videos from Sea Lemon on it, I realized that it was just sewing with paper. So it was perfect. So now I'm keeping my fingers for the inside of my new signature and the space between my new signature and my last signature so that I can easily take my needle through there, pull it out and put it back through where I need it. That's not where I need it. With relative ease. The word relative is important. I like to do this while I'm watching Marvel movies or Disney princess movies because it doesn't take a lot of focus. It doesn't take very long. You can really finish putting together a book through one um, Disney or Marvel movie. I guess they're the same now. I'm almost done with my third signature. I'm gonna go back through to the space between my two signatures and then back out. And then through the same hole. Now I have my last one to do. The last one is always the easiest. It's like getting a reprieve, especially when it gets really tight. And then I'll close my whole book just to give it a good look at how it's doing. So as it gets longer, you'll have your first signature will have this one thread on it and all the ones after will just have one line coming down where your stitches are. And at this point, what I wanna do is just go through my signatures so far and tighten them. And I'll do this at various points wherever I think that I need to. And I just pull gently on the inside, going towards the end of my book. And then give my needle one final tuck. So then I have nice tight signatures. And we're gonna repeat this same step for the rest of our signatures until we have all six in there. And the length of this book will be, hang on, eight, 16, 16 times six, 32, 64, 96. It'll be 96 pages long. I'm at the start of a new signature. So I'm going to the same one that I just finished off. I'm gonna go back in through the end. Go ahead. With the shrink, how do you decide how long it's gonna be? Because what happens if you run out of shrink? I'm about to run out. Yeah, that's what I just noticed. So, <laughs> so I'm gonna show you um, as soon as I probably, you wanna leave, um, a good four inches of string for you to work with. If you end up with less, with a little bit of focus and dexterity, you can probably tie a knot in it. That will work. Um, and if you can, you want to try to run out on the outside. So I'm gonna do one more stitch and then I'll show you how to do that. Especially if you're making a long book, you will run out of thread and you will have to do this. Make sure that's nice and tight. Okay, so I'm going to set my book down with the signature open where I'm working. 
I want to keep it tight because I don't want any of my other strings to become loose. And what you'll do is my needle's very large. If your needle wasn't as large as mine, you might be able to knot this with your needle still attached. Just cut your needle out. And now you have a string here. Um, you're going to wrap it in a circle and just put a knot in it, whatever your favorite knot, knotting types is. And because it's on the outside, you wanna to try to get your knot as close as you possibly can to your hole in your signature that you're working on. So I'm going to tie my knot and then gently push it towards the hole to see if I can get it right up against it. If you have a millimeter or two, it will still be fine, but for the best results, I'm actually gonna close mine completely for this knot process. If I was doing it in my lap, I would keep it open. And scrunch, 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 scrunch. All right, so don't trim your thread yet. Leave your thread untrimmed, just for this moment. Rethread your needle the same way I showed you at the beginning. What size needle are you using? Do you know? I do not. But it looks like a big one. <laughs> oh, yes. So I use a leather working needle for this. Okay. okay. Just because it puts enough. It, it, I, you can use a regular, any size needle. A regular size needle will work too. But I found that the leather working needles punch through the paper at they have, they have a, a different tip, so that makes sense. It makes it much easier. So this needle is three and a quarter inches long. Okay. There's a lot of flexibility in book binding. You can use pretty much any kind of thread you can use any kind of needle. Um, and it really comes down to your preference. Would you prefer to have as minimal uh, threading as possible? You'll use a small needle and thin thread. Um, there will be no chance of anyone seeing the threading in your book if you did that. But I sort of like seeing the threading in my books. I think that sort of if you, oh, I'm sorry, I was tying this off and I wasn't supposed to. Oh, wait, no, I am supposed to. All right, so you're going to just thread it exactly the same way you did the at the start, putting a knot at the end of your doubled thread. And you'll trim that one. And what you're going to do is you're going to take your new thread and Underneath your knot that you made in this one, you're going, since it's double, right? You're going to just put your needle through that pair. My thread is bunching because it is very tight. And you're gonna pull it most of the way through, leave your, the, your new thread, leave your knot, and you're going to loop your needle back through the center of that pair. And now you can trim your old thread. and it's long again. If you ended up with too much space to begin sewing right away into your hole, if you didn't get it close enough, loop back to your first signature and back around 
And that should use up just a few millimeters or a bunch of millimeters if you need to. You can do it several times um, so that you can start sewing again. Hmm. One of my signatures is too tall. I wonder how that happened. And so now I'll go back to where I was at my sewing. I'm coming back through a puncture hole right now. Now I'm on the inside of my new signature going back out. Just a time check, you have 25 more minutes. Cool. I might leave this at four signatures then, just so I can show you how to finish off your spine. Um, so you go back through your third signature. And then out your new signature on the inside. Same thing for the rest. All right, so I recommended six signatures for you guys for a 96 page book. I'm going to stop at more of a booklet um, with only 64 pages. To finish off your book, you will go back through your last, your last stitch underneath. You'll just loop it under the same Make sure it stays tight while you do this. You might have to undo it because if it's not tight, it won't um, tie correctly. Curses. Okay. And you'll pull it tight. It won't be a knot yet. It's not solid enough, enough yet. So you're gonna to wanna to do that at least one more time. And that third, second time you come through underneath, you'll work with me thread. You will come back through your loop just to actually tie it. And then that should tie tight easily without any finagling. And then you trim off your thread and your signatures are sewn and ready to be bound. Um, it's a good idea to not immediately go to the next step when you're book binding. At this point, what I'll do is I will get really heavy books, several dictionaries, and I will stack them on top just to press it as tightly as possible overnight before I bind it together with glue. But I don't have time for that. So next we're going to be putting on our paper binding. So what it is, I'm using bright green, but you won't see this part. It doesn't matter what color it is. You're going to take a strip of paper that is wide enough to go all the way around your spine and about one inch on each side of your pages. I'll show you closer, that makes more sense. There we go, just like that. <laughs> oh, my favorite Disney princess movie is Cinderella because Everybody likes to say that she's the worst princess because um, she's like a, a trope of all, girls just need a man to come save them. But actually, um, if you pay attention to the story, she's an abuse victim and she has no way out of her current situation. And the only thing she wanted was to go to a party. And 
through her own manifestation, they call it magic in the story, but through her own manifestation, she manages to go do the only thing she wants to, to have a reprieve um, from her horrible life. And in that instance, she also happens to find love and move on, um, but falling in love with the prince did not solve all of her problems, especially if you watch Cinderella 2 and 3, which are good movies. <laughs> Anyway, back to making my book. I'm talking about Disney princesses all day. <laughs> You're going to use um, your super glue at this point, not your Mod Podge. I use Quick Hold. It's um, a transparent glue that you can get at Joann's and it works on everything. It works on foam, it works on fabric, it works on metal, it works on plastic, it works on paper. And the way you should do this is to put the glue on the spine of your book instead of on the paper. And you'll just spread the glue all the way down the spine like that. And then don't pour, just sort of spread on the paper on both sides. You don't need a lot on the sides, to be honestly, this is honest. It's more about the spine. And then to put your binding on, you start on one side of your paper. See, it's not on my spine yet. And then I am going to hold this with a death grip as tight as I possibly can. I'm even going to set it down and push while I pull my paper. Oh, I split a little bit. I'm going to pull my paper as tightly as I can over my spine. Oh, I did it too well. Hang on. You can use gorilla quick dry glue that lasts that takes only about 10 seconds to dry um and that will make your book binding project go much faster mine takes about 45 minutes to dry but i can go on to the next step just fine because i've done this a lot and it won't hurt anything so you shouldn't see your stitches anymore They'll be covered up. And I'm really pressing on my spine here because I want that glue to seep between my signatures a little bit. That's going to keep your signatures from opening all the way up. So if this isn't on tight enough, when you open up your book between two of your signatures, there'll be a gap. The tighter this is and the more you press the glue in between the pages, the more seamless your signatures will end up being. And at this step, um, I would once again turn to the dictionaries and I would put the dictionaries on top of my bound signatures um, and leave them there for about an hour um, or however long it takes my glue to really dry. Um, after that, you're ready for the cover. This step with the signatures is going to be your first step, no matter what kind of cover you're making. If you're making a hard back book, you make your cover separately and then you just attach it to your book. If you're using leather, same thing, you will make it separately and then attach it to your book. In this video, I'm doing a paperback book, which is the easiest kind of book to make, and you can make it right on top of your signature. Ooh, I left my cardstock. Oh. So you can get regular eight and a half by 11 cardstock. It's kind of and it's good for a paperback book or at Joanne's. They There's have something covering your mic. Is that better? A little bit. Huh? 
How about now? It's a little bit robotic. Hmm. Um, it might be my Wi-Fi. Is it still bad? No, it's better now. Okay, great. It, there must have just, I live in the middle of nowhere, so must have just been a hiccup in the greater internet scheme. At Joann's, you can get these really large squares of cardstock. They're, I, mean, I don't know if they're more thick than regular cardstock, but I feel like they are. Um, I, should, I, I don't know. I just, I like these better. So um, what I would do for a paperback book is cut your cover very carefully. Um, your cover should be the guide for how small you trim your pages. So if I, and you can, you're not going to want to fold it until it's on your signatures. I'm putting these to the side right now. I don't need them right now. You want it to be larger than your signatures, but pretty close to what your final product is going to be. I'm sorry, did I say larger? I meant smaller. You want it to be smaller than your signatures, but very close to what you want your final product to be. Because It has to be smaller because at the end, you're going to take a box cutter and go through and trim every page to the side size of your cover. And if your cover is bigger than your pages when you're making a paperback book, then you're going to have to trim your book a lot smaller than you probably wanted to. If you're making a hardcover book, you will trim your signatures without a cover, and then you will add your cover in later, and your cover is a quarter inch bigger than your signatures on all three of your open sides. But this isn't about hardcover books, this is about paperback books. So. I'm going to cut my cover. And remember this book is four by five and a half. So because I have a spine included, you need to include that measurement in the width of your book. So instead of being eight inches total for the top of my book, because you know I have a front and a back, I have to include the width of my spine, which this one was going to be a half an inch, but since mine is shorter, because I only used four signatures, it's three eighths, about three eighths big. So my cover width will be eight and three quarters. Let's see, that's six. I recommend a paper cutter. I usually have one with me. But um, I forgot it. And some people don't have a paper cutter anyway. So having, showing you with scissors, I mean, is probably the best route to go. When I chose my length, for my cover, remember I wanted it to be smaller than my signatures are currently. So what I did was I just put my mark, um, what's the word? Just a tiny, a tiny fraction of a hair before the actual measurement I took of the cover. I recommend using 
using a square, even though I am not currently. Um, it will help you keep your book edges from being a rhombus instead of a rectangle. And that will be my paperback cover. Sometimes when you're scrapbooking or decorating a cover of a book, you'll make a terrible, terrible mistake. And you won't be able to get the glue off, or you won't be able to fix the paint, or the, the gemstones don't line up the way you wanted them to. So at this point is when you decorate your cover. If you put your cover on your signatures and glue it down and make it permanent, and then you decorate your cover, and then you mess up your cover, you're stuck with a messed up book. So I'm not decorating my cover. I'm just showing you how to make a book. You can decorate your cover however you like. You can do whatever you like. Um, a 10 minute warning. Yep, I'm almost done. So after you decorate your cover, you're going to fold it around your signatures just to try to get the creases in there real good. Sort of like that, that's what I like to do. Um, if I'm using a hardback book, the process for making a cover is a lot more complicated than a paperback book. Now that I have my crease in there where I want it to be, I'm going to glue it down to only the spine. It is only supposed to be glued to the spine, not the pages. So this is where you would use your super glue still. And you're going to lightly, not too much glue, um, all the way down, even on your signature pages, all the way to the top and bottom with your super glue. Then you'll put that inside of your cover and you can see my pages still because once again, we want our cover to be smaller than our pages. If you were using Gorilla Glue that dries in 10 seconds, you'd be done. Mine um, is not done because it's going to take 45 minutes to dry, but I can keep it together and work on it at the same time while it's drying. If you have glue like mine, that takes a while to dry, take a break, maybe put a dictionary on top of your creation while it's drying so it stays nice and flat. Okay, so now what you should have is a booklet with pages that are too big for your cover and an inside that's ugly. So let's make the inside not ugly. This is where your two extra pieces of paper come into play. So I said 20 seven pieces of paper. We use 24 on the signatures. We use one on the spine binding. And now you should have two more for your cover sheets. This is where you use the Mod Podge. And what you're going to do with your cover sheets is you will Mod Podge the whole outside of them. And they will go right here on this ugly page. Ah, and the ugly page goes away. And then you'll have a a nice cover on the inside. Some people will even use fabric for their cover sheets, um, or uh, there's all kinds of decorative paper. They're, they're not really papers. They're like um, they're plastics that you can use here, or shiny metal papers. Um, people like to get really fancy with their cover sheets to make their book really fancy. I had a paintbrush here, and now it's gone. On, I might run out of time. How many minutes do I have left, Cookie? Seven minutes. Seven minutes. Okay. So just in case I run out of time, what you're going to do is glue this down on your inside. And this is the back. You're going to glue your other cover sheet down on the uh, inside. Um, and once that's done, the only thing you have to do 
is take a box cutter and a cutting board and you won't be able to cut through all the pages at once. I'll sometimes use a clamp to clamp down my, my book as I'm cutting it. And you will just cut through, oh, I don't wanna cut my cover page right now. You will just cut through layer by layer right on the edge of your cover. And you'll lose a couple of pages at a time. And you'll just keep doing that till you get through the whole book. And all your signature pages are completely even. Once you're done with this step, with your um, trimming of your pages, I take sandpaper and I sand the edges of my signature. And if I was using a paperback book, my paperback book. If you've ever felt the edge of a Bible, how it's like soft, that's what, that's how they get it like that. It's from sanding the edges of your paper down so they're perfectly smooth. Now, all those instructions were for if I ran out of time, I'm gonna show you how I put my cover page in. See if I can put you back up here now. Mod Podge is great. It's not too thick of a glue. Um, it's not gonna hurt, hurt your book. It doesn't dry too fast. Um, and with your cover pages, you don't want to use super glue because they're supposed to be the flexible part of your book. Um, when you open your book, you can sometimes hear it crinkle um, or just the sound of opening a brand new book. That's the sound of the glue on your cover page sort of being tugged at um, because your cover attaches only to the spine. The reason for that is because your book, your signatures, will try to pull away from each other as you open pages. So in order to avoid any tearing, um, when I first made, started making books, I, I glued everything together and it was difficult to open. So I just going to stick this in right in the corner. Mod Podge is great because you can really move it around. It doesn't um, stick right away. It's not tacky. And then after that dries, Mod Podge doesn't take very long to dry. When you open up your paperback book, you will have a very nice cover page that secures your cover to your signatures. It looks great. Well, it would if I had more time. I appreciate the compliment, but my pages aren't trimmed and I still have some glue here. <laughs> like, honestly. If you don't want to use a box cutter, I have in the past trimmed my pages with scissors, but it doesn't get as straight a cut. Um, and that's really the whole thing, aside from my pages being trimmed. This book is done. Thank you for taking the time to show us, Anasina. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, I'm gonna end the Facebook Live. All right.